Previously on Transformers University, we took a look at Transformers the movie, and now, with the playing field reset and new pieces in play, we take a look at how Transformers the movie reshaped the brand and reshaped the way stories were told. And the reverberations of that reset echoed across the brand, including into Transformers coloring books, which we'll take a look at now, the coloring books of 1986 on Transformers University. Hello, my friend, and welcome to Transformers University. I am your host, Anthony Brucalli, owner, operator, madman, behind TFU.info, the website, the toy archive, the social media, the YouTube channel, this podcast, and more. And today, we are talking about the 1986 coloring books from Marvel Books. But before we get into the books, I want to give a big shout out to John and Maggie from Married with Comics. They host this uh, fantastic little podcast about comic books and, and, and being married. And uh, they are also doing a little side session about IDW's Transformers books called The Rod Pod. And uh, they will be covering more than meets the eye. And I think parts of Phase 2, if not all of Phase 2 from IDW. But it'll be more... Uh, the one episode I did get to hear, I think they've only done one episode so far, is uh, about more than meets the eye. And uh, I think the death of Optimus Prime, which leads into More Than Meets the Eye. And so if you want to have a chance to look back at More Than Meets the Eye and Lost Light and uh, all the great work from James Roberts and company, uh, be sure to check out that show. Uh, because uh, <laughs> I'm still in 1986, so I am not touching IDW for a while. And those are some of the greatest Transformers stories ever told. Now, the reason I'm shouting them out is... They've joined up on the Patreon at the junior level. Uh, that's the uh, $3 level. That gets you uh, uh, the podcast early, as it does for everyone from the $1 level and up. It also gets you uh, some extra entries into our contests, and uh, it gets you access to the exclusive podcasts, such as our look into uh, one of the Young Corgi books uh, we missed out on uh, when we covered them first time around, and some of our... Uh, interviews about Transformers the movie from uh, the last few episodes. And in this episode today, we're going to cover uh, three coloring books, uh, The Battle at Oil Valley, The Invasion of the Decepticon Camp, and The Lost Treasure of Cybertron. I had intended to cover five coloring books. However, two of them I could not find uh, online or for sale at a reasonable price uh, just about anywhere. So those are going to take a little time for me to hunt down. And when I do hunt those down, uh, just like with the Young Corgi book and uh, with one of the upcoming uh, Find Your Fate uh, episodes I'm doing for the Patreon, those will be exclusive to the Patreon. Um, so the two I couldn't find were Hot Rod's Escape and uh, the Super Size Coloring Activity book. Uh when I do find them, and if you know where I can find them, uh, please uh, drop me a line on Twitter at TFU underscore info or by email info at TFU dot info. And uh, when I find those, those will be Patreon exclusive podcasts. But we are going to get into these three books right now. And we are going to start with Battle at Oil Valley. And this one was written by uh, Josepha Sherman and art by Brad Joyce. And I found a theme, uh, particularly with Transformers books, uh, and particularly, I guess, with 1986 Transformers books, that uh, some creators of things that have gone on to be either um, bigger than Transformers or just, you know, uh, substantial works in their own right, uh, got their start with Transformers. And I think uh, uh, Josepha Sherman is one of those people. This is some of her earliest work, and she would go on to write a uh, Transformers Find Your Fate Jr. Uh, book that we have yet to cover, uh, but we will be in, in the coming weeks. Uh, from here, though, she went on to become a novelist, wrote a book called The Shining Falcon, and then also went on to write a series of Star Trek novels with Susan Schwartz from 1997 to 2007. This was called the uh, Vulcan series, and I believe it comprised of three or five books. Um, about the Vulcans. Uh, she was also a staff writer on the cartoon Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, and uh, she uh, passed away just a few years ago, back in 2012. 
Now, this book exists in a weird uh, continuity in relation to uh, Transformers the movie because Galvatron is in command of the Decepticons, but Starscream is alive and Hot Rod is still Hot Rod. So, <laughs> uh, if you're following the continuity of the movie closely, um, Galvatron shows up and kills Starscream during his coronation, right? So, there is no time period where Galvatron is Starscream's leader. Uh, so, this is definitely a weird, uh, I'd like to call it a pocket continuity. It's something that was definitely written probably when the movie was still in some sort of draft before it got changed uh, to have this change uh, where Starscream and Galvatron uh, are never really aligned. And uh, it was also probably uh, written with not spoiling the movie in mind. So this probably came out um, in times ahead of the movie, but without the notion of uh, spoiling the movie, but with being able to promote the toys that were on the shelves for the movie. So, the story here is pretty basic. The Decepticons plan to raid uh, these oil rigs in a place called Oil Valley. Uh, why they haven't done this already or don't do this regularly when the place is called Oil Valley is beyond me. Um, Hot Rod uses uh, the special optical sensors that extend from his eyes. Uh, it's kind of similar to his, um, his sunglass vision from the movie, but not exactly. Uh, uh, to see what is going on, and Daniel and Hot Rod uh, catch the Decepticons in the act and run back to get some help. Hot Rod and Daniel run into Grimlock, and the Dinobots go and fight the Decepticons. Uh, Dirge, Starscream, and Buzzsaw intercept the Dinobots, and the Dinobots and the Decepticons uh, fight it out. There's some weird art here, including one shot of Snarl tail whipping a Soundwave, where Soundwave is in just the most awkward, contorted position. Hot Rod and Daniel, though, they continue on to Autobot City to talk to the other Autobots. There, uh, they meet up with Ultra Magnus, Blur, Jazz, Bumblebee, Hound, Ratchet, Prowl, and Sunstreaker. Uh, there's some weird art here as the Decepticons and Dinobots still fight, where Grimlock grabs Starscream, and Starscream is like the size of a toy uh, in the... Uh, T-Rex mode of Grimlock, uh, which he certainly shouldn't be, being a giant fighter jet. Uh, it's kind of neat. It's kind of funny. I will post uh, the image to uh, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and whatever social media I can put it on, because uh, it is pretty good stuff. Now, uh, during the fight, Galvatron shoots off part of Swoop's wing, and also at the battle are um, Cyclonus, Blitzwing, and Either Brawn or Outback. Now, TF Wiki says Brawn, but uh, it's in vehicle mode. So, uh, take your pick, I guess. During the battle, Galvatron tries to sneak off to steal some oil for himself, but gets caught by Grimlock and then gets beaten with an oil tower. Yes, you heard me right. Grimlock beats him with an oil tower. Uh, Galvatron decides to flee and boards his ship, Cyclonus. Uh, so a lot of little weird, quirky things there. Uh, again, we have Cyclonus as Galvatron's ship, which is something that goes back to the Transformers, the movie storyboards. Um, and it's something we don't really see after Transformers, the movie, though it does happen from time to time in the film. Uh, it's certainly one of the more weird things, but that wraps up Battle at Oil Valley. And that takes us to the lost treasure of Cybertron. This one contains art by Frank Springer and Phil Lord, uh, written by Sonia Black Woods. Uh, she wrote a handful of kids' books back in the 80s, including uh, Moving Day Adventure, which was a uh, Fisher-Price Little People book, uh, the Care Bears Cousins Mystery Adventure, and one more Transformers book, a Big Looker book that we will definitely cover soon. Now, the Autobots and Daniel are returning from a road trip. And on this road trip, Cup, Hound, Sunshreaker, Hot Rod, Bumblebee, and Blur, the Autobots stop to rest and are spotted by Laserbeak. Now, Laserbeak overhears Cup telling one of his stories, a story about an Energon stash on Earth. Laserbeak transforms into his cassette mode and hides in Daniel's tape deck. Now, I won't even get into the weirdness of a tape deck still existing in 2005, 
Uh, but this may be the only time, or certainly one of the few times, I've probably said it before, but uh, where uh, the tape deck isn't sound wave, the tape deck is actually a tape deck, and, and the other way around, it is now laser beak uh, going into a disguise instead of uh, someone accidentally finding sound wave on the side of the road. Now, Cup tells the story of uh, cubes in the Ark crash that are missing, and the Autobots decide to go on a treasure hunt. Laserbeak transforms and flies away and gets spotted. Uh, also along for the ride are Sideswipe and Springer, and the Autobots head back to Metroplex to report. Hot Rod, however, uh, decides to drop off Daniel at home with his dad, Buster Witwicky. And his mom, Jessie. Yeah, so <laughs> keeping with the comic continuity here, uh, it is not Spike and Carly uh, in this book, but instead Buster and Jessie, who are the parents of Daniel, which really, really seems odd. So uh, either in an alternate reality, Buster and Jessie have the same child, or um, if somewhere in this reality something happened to Spike and Carly. And uh, Daniel was thus adopted by Buster and Jesse. Uh, Buster insists that Daniel stay home. Uh, the Autobots head back to Metroplex and plan some strategy. And the Decepticons are planning some strategy of their own on their ship, Cyclonus, which is drawn as Scourge. Uh, to make this even weirder, uh, the Decepticons on the ship are Galvatron, Soundwave, Rumble, or Frenzy, because it's black and white, you get to pick what color he is. And Scourge. So <laughs> we have a lot of weirdness going on in the art in this book. Now, everyone is decided to head to Mount St. Hillary to look for this Energon, and they fight. Uh, Sludge attacks Rumble. And I say this is Rumble because the text states that it is Rumble, and it is, in fact, the red one, because Sludge is fighting Rumble in color, on the cover of this book. Springer finds the uh, Energon cubes and they play hot potato with them. Eventually the container tears open and Starscream decides to stuff his face with Energon cubes. Uh, this is another funny image that I will post to the social media accounts. And of course, in the process of stuffing his face, Starscream claims leadership of the Decepticons and fights Galvatron. This leaves the Autobots to uh, let the Decepticons fight among themselves and walk away. The end. So, uh, nobody really gets the Energon cubes. Maybe the Decepticons do. The Autobots gave up because he, they rather let Starscream and Galvatron fight each other in this weird alternate Buster and Jesse are Daniel's dad universe. And that takes us to the final coloring book we are going to cover in this episode, The Invasion of the Decepticon camp, and you can catch this one on YouTube. Uh, I do not have the username uh, written down, but uh, I'll provide the link in the show notes. Um, someone went and colored all of these pages uh, digitally and then made a video of it, and it's pretty neat, and it actually was the only way I could find uh, the actual text and pages of this book. So uh, uh, if you want to follow along, there, there is certainly a place on YouTube to catch these clips. Now, this book was written by Pat Brigandi, and uh, she is a publishing specialist and agent in New York, and she worked for Scholastic for over 20 years. And art here, and this is a big, uh, big name, uh, Steve Ditko, co-creator of uh, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, along with Brad Joyce. And the second time we find uh, Steve Ditko doing a Transformers coloring book. Now, the story is that Blur wants to have a race, and uh, he decides to race Jazz. Blur wins, uh, and while watching the race, the Autobots do not see the Decepticon spying. And the Autobots on hand are Bumblebee, Springer, Ratchet, and Blur, uh, along with Jazz, and uh, Hot Rod as well, as we'll find out. Now, the Decepticons that are spying are Scourge, Laserbeak, and Bombshell, which means Bombshell is not dead. Uh, if we're following the movie, uh, which we aren't really. So this is another little symptom of this uh, pocket continuity, if you will. Now, Blur and Hot Rod have a race, and Hot Rod during the race gets distracted and smashes into a tree. In the confusion, uh, Bombshell 
fires a Cerebro shell into the head of Springer to take control of him. Now Grapple comes and tows Hot Rod away, and Ratchet begins his repairs. Also, Ratchet is alive. So during uh, these repairs, Springer begins to jump all over and act crazy because of Bombshell's Cerebro shell. Rekgar observes this, as does Perceptor, and then Springer attacks the Autobots. Ultra Magnus quickly realizes that this is the work of Bombshell, so the Autobots roll out. Uh, at Decepticon headquarters, Bombshell is bragging about what he did, and Galvatron, not happy with it, punches Bombshell. He knows the Autobots will come soon because of Bombshell's actions. Uh, the Autobots ready their attack and realize the Decepticons have human slaves. This is not really new for the Decepticons, as human slaves seems to be an uh, ongoing thing in the cartoon. The Autobots decide to attack from all sides, and Rekgar sets fire to the Decepticon fuel stores. Decepticon headquarters burns down, and the Decepticons flee to the hills. The Autobots need to capture Bombshell, so Bumblebee, Swoop, and Rekgar sneak into the Decepticon camp uh, outside of their base at night and capture Bombshell with a giant, super-strong trash bag. And I'm putting quotes around that because that is exactly what it says in the book. So if you want to catch Bombshell, all you need is a giant garbage bag. Uh, the Decepticons then attack, but the Autobots escape with their new captive. Now, Bombshell is threatened with death to remove the shell and does so before escaping. And that is the invasion of the Decepticon camp. The actual invasion of the camp is all like, well, I don't know what, four or five pages of the entire book. But uh, the giant super strong trash bag, uh, I am shocked, absolutely shocked that has not come back in other Transformers lore. And if uh, anyone with any sort of ability to put that in somewhere official is listening, uh, you need to do so. Uh, <laughs> that is all I am saying. And that will wrap up our look into the 1986 coloring books for this episode of Transformers University. Of course, if you want to help out the show, the best way to do it, honestly, is to swing on by our Patreon, patreon.com slash TFU info, and join up. Uh, you can join up for as little as a buck a month, one, one U.S. dollar a month, uh, and that will get you access to the show uh, early, at least one day early. Uh, last month, I put up all of March on March 1st, so uh, people got four episodes ahead of everyone else, uh, and I'm thinking for April, I may do not necessarily uh, all of April ahead of time, but whatever I can put up early, I will. Uh, so this episode, for sure, is going up way early on the Patreon. Now, with that said, if you don't want to sign up at the Patreon, I totally understand. It's cool. Uh, there are plenty of other ways for you to help the show. Now, you can help us out by using our Amazon link, tfu.info slash Amazon. That will take you to Amazon.com. And then anything you buy on Amazon, they kick back uh, some pennies our way, some change towards tfu.info. And uh, so you can do your normal shopping, pay your normal prices, and help us out all at the same time. Now, if you want to connect with the show, you want to talk to me, you want to tell me how much you love the show, please uh, tell me how much you love the show. I really like that. Uh, but, or if you want to tell me how much you hate the show, please do that too. Uh, you drop me a line. Uh, we can go, let's go old school first. We'll go old school email info at tfu.info I will tell you that I don't check it as often as I should um, but I do check it so if it takes me a little bit to get back to you uh, just please understand now uh, best way to get in touch with me is on Twitter at tfu underscore info uh, you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram uh, facebook.com slash tfu info and instagram.com slash tfu info Next time on Transformers University, we are going to head back across the pond. And get back into the Marvel UK run of the Transformers comic. We will be talking issues 59 through 65. And I know that's a slight jump ahead in uh, continuity by about an issue, 
uh, of the Marvel stuff, uh, the US stuff we've covered, but uh, we'll make it work and we'll make it all make sense, I promise you. So, until next time, I am your host, Anthony Brucali, owner, operator, madman behind TFU.info. See ya. <laughs>